So in today's video, we're going to cover all the latest news uh, that has happened with the Bitcoin ETF news. A uh, bunch of new updates have dropped yesterday on the BlackRock ETF applications, as well as the Grayscale versus SEC lawsuit has finally had a settlement. So we will dive into that as well. And uh, make sure to stick around because uh, we also have a major update on our latest trade positions from our copy trading, exactly what happened and our plan moving forward now that we have to adjust bias to be on the bullish side as the uptrend uh, is restarting. So uh, welcome everyone. If you're new here to the channel, my name is Dennis and on the Virtual Bacon channel, I share my views on market trends and investing strategy to build wealth in crypto. Okay, let's get right into it. So a uh, couple of things I wanted to cover. So all the news that has happened yesterday, what were them? You might have heard of a lot of uh, buds happening around BlackRock, uh, Bitcoin ETF, etc. So exactly what happened? Was this BlackRock ETF approved and were they actually starting to buy Bitcoin this month? So first of all, the main updates that were bullish signals that, that were signaling that this ETF will eventually get approved is that uh, BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF, their ticker has been listed as a uh, with their name IBTC on the DTCC website. So DTCC is the Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation, which is the uh, a company, major company in the US that provides clearing and settlement services to the financial markets. So before the BlackRock ETF can start trading on any exchange, they can uh, they need to go through this process to get a ticker listing officially so that uh, all the re uh, re institutions can recognize which instrument it is. Along with that, they also obtained a CUSIP. So this is a unique identification number, as you can see on the exchange traded funds list on the DTCC uh, settlement list. Here you see each one of these instruments have a CUSIP that identifies them. Now, today you can find this uh, BlackRock. Um, so BlackRock's ETFs are called iShares. And here you see, should be able to find it. Okay, look up Bitcoin and then here. So IBTC with this CUSIP identification is the iShares Bitcoin Trust SHS. Uh, this is the instrument from BlackRock. So this is not an official listing, so you cannot buy this instrument yet. But however, this is preparation step for sure uh, leading up to their launch. So this is the first bullish uh, update that happened yesterday. Second one is that uh, BlackRock came out and said that they will be seeding their ETF uh, with cash this month, which is earlier than people were expecting. Now, what does this mean? What does it take to seed a new ETF? So I looked this up a little bit. Uh, essentially, the seed capital is the initial investment that allows an ETF to launch and start trading. So in order to facilitate the trading, you have to have some form of... Uh, you have to have both sides of the pair for any instrument. So in this case, it will be the ETF shares and also uh, I'm assuming it's against cash against US dollar. Uh, so this is used to fund the creation units that underline the ETF so that the shares can then be offered to investors in the open market and trade it. So uh, BlackRock essentially in order to launch this ETF, they need to seed the instrument by either putting money in themselves or going to their, you know, uh, friendly investors and say, okay, we want to create this new ETF. Can you give us a uh, hundred million dollars, for example, from, from wall street. And uh, we will pair that in half as the uh, use half of that to buy Bitcoin and create the shares and half of that to pair with uh, us dollars and create this trading market. Now this sounds very bullish. I agree. Uh, but I just want to say that even though they say that they are seeding this, uh, instrument now doesn't mean that they are just actively just starting to buy Bitcoin because BlackRock is 
nine trillion dollar asset manager and in order for them to accumulate bitcoin well they wouldn't want to release the public news before they accumulate their positions right that's first of all and secondly is that well they could have way earlier accumulated those bitcoins and only now offer those uh you know bitcoin uh, etf contracts to their seed capital investors uh right before they create this contract so i think uh most likely uh this is not them actively buying bitcoin in the market today uh this is just setting up the sort of official like liquidity pool if you like the DeFi side of it but just pairing that um all the funds needed in order to make this exchange tra traded pair work uh, however for the actual bitcoins in their uh in their treasury in their company holdings chances are those purchases have happened way before uh if they can release this news uh whenever they want and their goal is to accumulate bitcoin as cheap as possible why would they release the news first and then accumulate so that just doesn't make sense to me however you know still keep in mind this is definitely a bullish sign because even if they don't uh this doesn't mean that they are buying bitcoin actively right now it still is a very positive sign that points to the inevitable uh approval of this bitcoin spot etf from blackrock so overall bullish sign now one last thing that was settled yesterday is the grayscale versus sec etf lawsuit so i have been expecting the grayscale etf lawsuit to settle since friday so a lot of people we, we covered this covered this on last week's live stream as well so after grayscale and the sec lawsuit uh semi-officially concluded it where the sec chose to not appeal to the court's decisions uh people were speculating that the courts now have a seven-day period before they uh, have to issue a certain mandate to the sec on what they should do next around the grayscale etf now a lot of people were hoping that the courts will just directly approve the grayscale spot etf conversion or uh, they might order the sec to just go ahead with this conversion uh, and give them some sort of deadline so this is the bullish case that a lot of people were hoping for however yesterday uh, dc courts have finalized the lawsuit but they gave no specific instructions to the sec to approve or deny or any deadline around the grayscale etf conversion so here is the entire thing that they said basically it's just a very basic mandate that said uh, okay in in accordance to the judgment the case is now closed nothing more no further instructions whatsoever so in my opinion this was actually quite bearish for uh against what people were expecting so a lot of people were expecting that by last friday or this monday the grayscale etf conversion will happen or we will know some sort of deadline that this has to happen but now uh, with this basically blank mandate the uh, the review process is open back again so the sec just has to treat grayscale's etf conversion as any other application but they can re-review their application and can choose still to uh, approve or deny it later on and the deadline there, well there's no strict deadline it just follows the uh, typical process now so this is another major news that happened yesterday now uh let's now get into the market rally so as you guys know i have been trading bitcoin very actively on fair desk doing copy trading and i've been posting you know my trade analysis we've been doing these live streams as well so for the past two weeks uh not even two weeks i would say four weeks or so i have been decently neutral on bitcoin in fact i wasn't expecting a major rally at all and this is why i was actually shorting bitcoin right around 28 uh 20 be, between 28 to 29k and uh, after yesterday's rally well i took a major loss as well so what was the underlying process for our trades in the past few few weeks what go, what went wrong and what's our plan going forward do we have to adjust anything so first of all let me show you the charts 
so essentially i was i have been shorting uh since this rally here so my main bet was that this sideways range that we have had since march of this year is a ranging period where you can short the tops and long the bottoms that was the whole idea now this has been working really well even in this uh bottom of the range here between 25k and 28.5k so i have had this same analysis and have been following this since august and it has been doing really well in the sideways period now come last week i was building a short position right in this range so i had a lot of entries uh, in the high 28s and I refilled some positions on this first pump as well at 28.5 because as you guys remember uh, this wick here so this major wick this was the fake news that came from Cointelegraph uh, saying that the BlackRock spot ETF was approved last week but it turned out to be fake news so I built a bunch of positions here as well after this fake news now uh the plan was that well we knew that this was the top of the range and we knew that the uh grayscale bitcoin etf uh lawsuit decision was coming either friday or this monday and my expectation was that it's going to be relatively bearish because uh, the courts most likely wouldn't issue a mandate uh, that orders the sec to approve the uh, grayscale ETF conversion and that was the case so they didn't move the case at all in any way however two things I really failed to account for number one is well we really broke out of a sideways range period very quickly so for our position that we were holding in the sideways period the volatility really wasn't there on Bitcoin. So uh, we were not having these huge daily candles as we've seen in the past two days. Uh, in fact, the biggest candles we've had were only from 27K to 28.5. So not even 10%, 5% moves on a daily basis. So anything, you know, five, around 5% or so, our position was absolutely fine handling that. However, with the weekend news, I really, first thing was that I should have adjusted the uh, expectations for the volatility. So moving out of a ranging period into a trending period really uh, should have had much more strict price-based stop losses instead of following the news. So this was the number one. And number two, leading after that, which is, well, even though I was expecting the Monday grayscale news to drop relatively bearish, this was the case, but two other pieces of news dropped on top, which were the BlackRock DTCC and their uh, and them obtaining a CUSIP, uh, which, I mean, nobody outside of BlackRock leadership would have known this was happening. Uh, and secondly, which was uh, BlackRock... Uh, came out and leaked that they were seeding their ETF uh, in October, which was leaked yesterday. So two pieces of huge news that were definitely affecting the market in a bigger scale than the grayscale news. So when this news dropped around noon yesterday, should have closed the positions then. That's the number two, uh, number two things to take away. And number three, while well, going forward, now we have really broken out of a sideways range period. So whether you look at a uh, August, from August until October, two month period where Bitcoin was ranging from 25 to 28K, or if you zoom out even more, all the way back to March, when Bitcoin made the first sort of, double top here and then it made another top but now both of these tops these uh, resistances have been broken through so even on a six months period bitcoin is clearly not ranging anymore and has clearly started a new uptrend so now 
the most important thing is to adjust our trend bias to be uh, towards the uptrend, towards the upside, because Bitcoin is uh, very likely to continue the uptrend now, not in a straight line up, but chances are it's going to print higher highs and higher lows now. So in order to fit that, we have to adjust our positions. I'm personally adjusting my positions to be always long focused and focus on buying dips and completely avoid any shorts at all. Even if you're looking at very overhyped altcoins, uh, we, I was preparing to short dots leading into the parachain slot auctions, but even those positions are still going up very, very slowly now because the rising tide on Bitcoin is lifting all altcoin boats. So that's the number three adjustment I have to make, which is completely avoid all shorts while Bitcoin is in this new uptrend and only look for dip buying opportunities, only look for the long side. So that's the three adjustments we're making. Uh, okay. And yeah. Last bit I would I would say for a kind of reminder for myself is now that Bitcoin is starting this new uptrend, let's just do really quick TA here. So uh, 31.5K, you see, has acted as resistance, uh, has acted as support in the bull, bull market dumps in January 2021 and then summer 2021. And then uh, May 2022, right after the FTX crash, this was the first major bounce. Actually, I think this was the Luna crash. And then throughout the bear market, this level acted as resistance, resistance again. And then in the June correction, and then also in the August correction, it acted as, sorry, not that level, in the June rally. And in the August rally, it acted as resistance as well. So now... On a weekly weekly time frame, well, Bitcoin's weekly candle most likely will close above 31.5. We just have to wait for the weekly close, but chances are this is going to happen, uh, which means, well, the weekly consolidation resistance has not been broken. And on a daily time frame, well, the uptrend is very clear now. Whether you look at uh, the short-term uptrend since September, where you have low, high, higher, low, and now, well, this was pretty scary, but it did make a very clear higher high now. So wherever this next correction comes, whether it's here, whether it's here, wherever it is, it's going to print a higher high above the October highs. So this is definitely going to show a higher uh, continuation in uptrend now. And uh, if we zoom out even further, and I think in this case, we can slap on the exponential moving average. So on a daily time frame, we can look at the 200 day moving average. Yeah. So you see that two of the most <clears throat> two of the most important patterns to determine a long-term uptrend has been confirmed. So number one is the, I'm going to remove the drawings. Number one is the uptrend indicated by higher highs and higher lows. So ever since the lows we made in the beginning of the year, right around 15K, we have had one low high, higher low at uh, 19K. This was the Binance crash. And then another high, uh, higher low, higher high, and then equal low. But now definitely we have a higher high now above the previous high at 31.5. So this is why the 31.5K resistance was so important. And this was why we saw this huge rally blow through it because a lot of people were betting that this wasn't going to be the case and they were uh, acting as fuel essentially on yesterday's move. Uh, and on top of that, the 200 daily exponential moving average, well, now we have a very significant bounce from this EMA level as well. So this typically acts as the bull market support and the bear market resistance. So as long as Bitcoin continues to revisit but bounce from this level, that is the clearest sign as a bull market continuation. And now, well, 
doesn't get better than that. It, it's showing a very, very clear and strong bounce from this EMA level. So all in all, Bitcoin's uptrend is very clear, even on a 10 month long time frame from the beginning of the year, it is showing an uptrend, which means, again, have to adjust our bias. Do not uh, look for any short positions now, only focus on uh, buying the dips on pullbacks. That's the most important thing you can take away from today's market. Okay, so uh, now that Bitcoin has had this very strong move, what's the next likely case to happen? How do we bet on uh, either Bitcoin correction or for altcoins to catch on to Bitcoin? So I think given how strong this move was, I'm going to remove the drawings again. Given how strong yesterday's move was, a lot of people were waiting to long right around this 31.5k flip, right? So we have uh, this resistance level that everyone was waiting uh, for it to either break and now it has been broken. So everyone's going to be waiting for this move where uh, if Bitcoin comes back down to test 31.2, 31.5k, they're tr they will try to buy this bounce here because that's the clearest uh, flip of a resistance into support and buy on the retest. So because everyone already knows this, I think this is unlikely to happen in this case. What's more likely is for Bitcoin to just slowly grind up or start to just trade sideways in consolidation. So in case that happens, I think uh, altcoins will start to catch up to Bitcoin. So my main focus going forward in the next few weeks is going to be finding uh, the strongest performing altcoins in the past few months uh, that have shown strength. And now, since Bitcoin has led this move, these altcoins are likely to follow as the next ones. Uh, once Bitcoin starts consolidating and that liquidity flows into altcoins. So couple clear examples. Number one, obviously, it's Ethereum. So when you look at Ethereum's chart right now, uh, side by side against Bitcoin. So you see Bitcoin's major resistance that uh, was broken through yesterday is this 31.5K. So this dates all the way back to the uh, bull market corrections and then the top of the bear market consolidation. So on Ethereum, well, that's this level right at uh, 2000, right? So you see bear market consolidation was rejected from this resistance. And then back here between 18.5, uh, uh, $1,850 to around $2,000. Well, this is a lot of consolidation in the bull market. So now, Basically, what this chart is telling me is that Ethereum is lagging behind Bitcoin, but it's catching up very quickly because this level hasn't been even retested. But most likely, once we test this level, it's going to break above. And this uh, breakout retest is going to be one to watch. So I think Ethereum uh, definitely one to watch. In fact, I hold a lot of Ethereum right now just for that continuation trade where uh, everyone already knows that once Bitcoin starts running, well, Ethereum is going to be slightly lagging, but will catch on very quickly. Now, uh, we can also see that on the ETH BTC ratio chart. So I have covered this, uh, I think, last week as well. So over a very long weekly time frame, ETH BTC is coming into a major support level uh, right around 0 0.052. So this level dates all the way back to the 2017 bull market where this level acted as the first bounce levels before uh, ETH had this major downside against Bitcoin. So whether this will happen again or not, whether Ethereum will break much lower than Bitcoin, I don't know if that's for sure going to happen. All I know is that the ROI getting into uh, Ethereum right now versus Bitcoin is very high because we're testing this major support level now. So the last time that Ethereum has underperformed Bitcoin so much was back in uh, June 2022. 
and you see right after ETH had a major bounce. So it had, uh, how much was this? This was a, uh, where is it here? This was a, wow, 55% move where Ethereum pumped against Bitcoin. So is something like this going to happen? Possible. Um, I think in the long term, Ethereum should slowly trend towards its previous all-time high in the ETH BTC ratio. Actually, not previous all-time high, but bear, uh, last bull market highs. Uh, so the risk to reward ratio, betting on Ethereum to have a catch-up rally against Bitcoin here is very good. Uh, because we're looking at, well, from here to the bull market top, that's a 58% rally of Ethereum versus Bitcoin. And the downside, well, that's very clear because we can, uh, if Ethereum continues to drop against Bitcoin, even when the market is turning around, then, well, the trade will be very clear. Dump your Ethereum for Bitcoin because Bitcoin is outperforming. So the risk to reward ratio here is really good. That's why I think Ethereum is a really good bet right now. Uh, okay. So next coin I want to cover, most people have uh, heard of this from every other channel out there, and that's Chainlink, right? So Chainlink has had this major breakout in the past three, four days. So this is a very long-term weekly chart that dates all the way back to May 2022. So one and a half years of consolidation uh, in this uh, bear market sideways range period from uh, about $5.50 to $8.25. So now, uh, well, this uptrend looks very clear. So even though we had five, actually five of these uh, previous fake outs above $8.2, where big, uh, Chainlink failed to close above this level, this time around, the weekly candle actually closed above it clearly. So most likely this is the start of a new uptrend for Chainlink. Uh, this is the most convincing rally it has had in one and a half years. So now what's the crucial level? Well, that's very clear. So if Chainlink can drop towards the 8.3 level again, that's going to be a killer buy right here on the bounce because that's uh, the clearest break breakout retest level where the previous resistance now turns into support and you long on the retest of the new support. So I think we will be very lucky to get 8.2. I think anywhere uh, between 8.2 to even the top of these wicks, right around 8.8, .8, that's going to be a buy range for me. So anything between 8.2 to 8.8, .8, that's going to be a long for me. Okay, so that's on Chainlink. Uh, a couple more that has been outperforming the market. So Solana... Also very clear. So I actually have this chart. I think we covered it uh, maybe two weeks ago on the Solana price prediction video. So Solana's uptrend, uh, I was waiting. You see this question mark is. So I was waiting for Solana's price to revisit this previous high here, uh, right around $26.5 to see if it can break above and make a new high. And it did in yesterday's market rally. So now, while well, the trade on Solana is very clear as well. So now that it has uh, the clear uptrend with low in the beginning of the year at $8, higher high at 28, higher low, higher high, higher low here at 18, and now a new higher high at 32, uh, we can just bet on while well, the uptrend to continue and we can look to long right around the retest of the previous uh, resistance turn support, which is right around 28, 27.5 to $28. So if Solana can now come back down from 32 to retest right around $28, that's going to be entry for me. Uh, and in terms of take profit, well, you guys know my stance on Solana for the very long term. I think the previous all time high will be quite hard to reach at 250 because how how overhyped Solana was in the last bull run. However, at the very least, I think these uh, higher support levels are very clear. So right at $48, uh, 
sorry, higher resistance levels. That's the consolidation top uh, in the May 2021 rally and the bear market rally in July 2022. So 47, I think that's pretty reasonable target. And then much higher targets will be at uh, between 78 and 135. I wouldn't wait till much higher than that because I think chances are uh, Sonata would have topped out before then. But all in all, this uptrend is starting to establish itself very clearly. So anything around $27, $28 is going to be a buy for me. Okay, so that's on Solana. Uh, very interesting one to bring up here, actually. Uh, Pepe. Not that Pepe. Uh, this Pepe on here. There we go. So Pepe actually had a major pump yesterday. So from even on the daily chart, it pumped 40% if you count the entire candle. So why did it have a 40% pump? Well, because Pepe yesterday had a, uh, let me point you to the news right here. So Pepe actually had their team burn majority of their token supply that was causing uh, the biggest FUD yesterday. So here, uh, you can see right here, I'm going to bring you this, uh, this news here. So 6.9 trillion PayPay around $7 million was transferred to the burning address. Uh, this was very significant because the PayPay uh, team wallet actually had a major FUD that caused this crash uh, since August in the first place because uh, the team held around, uh, I, I want to say $14 million worth of PayPay tokens and they actually transferred some of that. One of the co-founders transferred a large portion of that to centralized exchanges to dump. So then after that, they still had, uh, I want to say around 10 million total PayPay tokens left in the treasury and people were fearing that this will get dumped. However, uh, after yesterday's burn, now we can look at uh, PayPay's entire token supply directly on Etherscan, and you see on the holders list. So nobody controls large portion of PayPay supply anymore. And in fact, the largest holder now is only 1.7%. So PayPay now truly is a very, very decentralized coin. Uh, by holder percentages. I was reading that uh, they still held, yeah, this, this number makes sense. So they still have 7 million, but compared to the fully diluted valuation of 400 million, that's only, how much is that? That's uh, uh, less than 2%, right? 1.75% of the supply is held by the team, which is very, very small. So even if they dumped all of this in one batch, wouldn't cost too much of a crash anymore. So that's the bullish news for PayPay. Uh, for any meme coin, community distribution is very, very important. Uh, so now PayPay has had this pump. And what's more interesting though is also the price. So you see the breakout level here is very clear. So we have this essentially double bottom doesn't get cleared in that as a double bottom uh, reversal pattern. And the neckline of the double bottom is right around uh, A286. So this level you see also dates back to the June summer crash this year where uh, Pepe had this first crash and it stopped right at this level. So this was significant support here uh, in this neckline with significant resistance. So now the next time that Pepe dips back down to this level, that's going to be a buy for me right here at 828. Let's say 83. I don't know how many zeros that is. So six zeros, 83. This is the level I'm going to watch. Uh, now, fundamentally, long term, is PayPay worth investing in? That's a separate question. I have made a whole video on meme coins and my stance on them. But I think in the very short term, uh, you have to bet on coins that have outperformed the market and really had a stronger move in yesterday's uh, market rally and actually outperformed Bitcoin. So Pepe 
with this 40% rally yesterday, they are clearly leading the way. And I think their momentum will likely continue. You just have to bet on uh, the entry at a good level. So that's what I'm waiting for right here. Uh, okay, so that's a few coins. We covered, uh, we covered Ethereum, Link, Solana, Pepe. Let's do one more. So uh, Caspa. I covered this coin also in an in-depth live stream about a month ago. So this is the strongest performing coin in the entire bear market. So you see, ever since its launch, it has just been uptrend after uptrend after uptrend, higher highs and higher lows consistently. So now uh, Caspa is also pushing towards its previous all-time high at 0.052. In fact, it's just testing that now. And uh, uptrend is still very clear. So we had, let's say, this high here, higher low, equal high, but also a higher low. So now the next thing we need to watch is whether this previous all-time high level can hold uh, and can break. So if this previous all-time high breaks and we even just get a little bit higher to 0 0.056, that's going to be very convincing because this will essentially show a new higher high above the previous high, and the uptrend will continue. Uh, in that case, I will look to bet on this flip of the previous resistance turned into support right at 0 0.052. So if this breakout happens, I'm looking to buy right here. If this breakout doesn't happen and this resistance level s becomes a little bit too significant in the short term, then I will look to buy caspa somewhere with within this middle uh middle of this range so let's say uh if i can draw a range here here so right within this previous consolidation at 0 0.04645 range that's going to be really good buy because while our stop loss is going to be very clear right below this previous higher low here at 0 0.041. So that's the two scenarios that I'm seeing on, uh, where's my brush? That's the two scenarios I'm seeing on Caspa. If this breakout happens, I'm going to try to long on this retest. If this breakout doesn't happen, then I will try to buy the dip within this previous consolidation range with a stop loss below 0 0.041 uh, because that will invalidate the uptrend as we need to see continued higher highs and higher lows. Uh, yeah, so that's Caspa. Again, why am I interested in this coin even when it's continuing to push towards all-time highs? Well, now that Bitcoin is in the new uptrend, you best bet that the strongest performing coins since the beginning of the year in the bear market will now uh, continue to outperform the market because we should only be looking for uh, long side, which means we should be buying into strength and buy the dips on the strongest coins. That's the main setups uh, I'm personally looking for. Okay, that's all of the trade setups I have. I'm currently watching and yeah, that's it. Uh, let's do a quick five minute Q&A and we'll end it there. On virtualbeginning.com, you can join our Discord for trade setups and signals. And in the next few weeks, I'm going to be dropping all kinds of altcoins that I'm seeing, uh, which are all performing the market for the past few months uh, and the ones that I'm uh, looking to buy the dips on. Uh, yeah, so join our Discord if, so you don't miss it. We have a free VIP program. You just have to join. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more uh, Alcoin videos. So we have all the portfolio videos, hidden gem videos coming in the next month or so, just starting to plan those. So stay tuned for that. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in to today. Really good live stream again. Hope you guys are staying safe. And remember again, now that the more, uh, bull market is really starting to kick off and we are starting the new uptrend on Bitcoin, avoid shorts at all costs and only look to buy into strength and buy the dips on the strongest altcoins. That's the most important thing you can take away. 
uh, and that's my main uh, main rule to keep going forward in the weeks and month. Okay, uh, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys on the next video, next live streams. Cheers, bye bye.